Do you ever wake up in the morning and groggily say to yourself, I'm the only person in the world who enjoyed Far Cry New Dawn? I do. A little too often. It's concerning. This is a game where you can pet a dog. Far Cry New Dawn is the first time the series has done a direct sequel to a previous game, and it takes place 17 years after Far Cry 5 ends. In stark contrast to the vast, colorless plains of Hope County's past, New Dawn shows the fictional locale set in southwest Montana in a whole new light. The lands are blooming with color, buildings and vehicles have literally gotten a fresh coat of paint. Safe to say things look a little different this time around, but most importantly, dogs will be petted. Or pet. I looked it up and I still don't know. English is hard. Even if you've never played any of the Far Cry games before, you won't feel too lost. Although it takes place in the same physical location and has some ties to the previous story, it stands on its own just fine. That said, New Dawn will spoil the ending of Far Cry 5, so if you plan to play that game, you might want to do that first. The story begins with the residents of Hope County trying to rebuild after the dust settles from the chaos that occurred in 5. As it happens, twins Mickey and Lou would rather be in charge. Well, Merry fucking Christmas, everybody! You come in to stabilize the region. That's it, that's the story. It falls way short of what I thought was a great but slightly flawed narrative in Far Cry 5, but it's not terrible. It's just pretty much the same old thing with a new pair of villains, a little uninspired. You'll find yourself revisiting a lot of the same locations from Far Cry 5, and coming back to them after two years, I felt nostalgic over the places I could remember. This game is filled to the brim with little references and I loved all of them. The game definitely feels like more of the same, but I think Ubisoft still has a winning formula on their hands. New Dawn feels a lot like 5, which felt a lot like 4, which felt a lot like 3. You start off on a corner of a huge open world map and slowly plug away at conquering the whole thing by making new friends, collecting scraps, plants, and animal hides, taking over strongholds, and increasing the power of your militia until you finally reach the end. It's addicting and I love these games, but for some it can get repetitive. When this game came out, it got a pretty mediocre to poor reception, and I think part of it is due to fatigue of the franchise. Okay, let me say that again less diplomatically. People hated this game. There is a 0% chance the person who wrote this review actually played the game. And I think that's part of the problem. A lot of people's first impression of this was way different from what the game actually was. There are a lot of legitimate criticisms about the game, but even if you're bothered by politics and games, this game has none. I have no idea where that misconception came from. It doesn't bring much innovation to the table, but since I like the older game so much, and it's been a couple of years, I'm okay with that. Sometimes you want to just turn your brain off and go along for the ride. There's a lot of fun to be had in New Dawn, except for the strangely difficult Valve puzzle earlier in the game. Fuck this Valve puzzle. New to the series are some light RPG elements. There's a weapon crafting system that puts the scraps you collect to good use. Enemies come in four different levels, and you become better equipped to handle the higher ranking ones as you progress. I appreciate the extra challenge, but it leads to some of the tougher enemies feeling like bullet sponges. A well-placed headshot won't bring them down, which feels like a cheap way to increase the difficulty. I hope they don't do this again in the future, and instead opt to find more creative ways to make things more challenging. Like the previous games, you unlock perk points as you play, and you can use these to upgrade your abilities. Some of them are really convenient. The first one I bought allows you to hold three weapons. Others let you hold more ammo, pick locks, or carry a fishing rod, to name a few. You're that outsider, huh? One of my favorite parts of the Far Cry games, and New Dawn is no exception, is capturing the outposts. If you're not familiar, the game is littered with these outposts that are held by the enemy groups. If you take all the enemies out and take control, you get rewarded with a bunch of materials and items and get to fast travel to that location in the future. New Dawn takes it a step further and lets you scavenge the outposts. This gives you some bonus materials, but also lets higher level enemies come back later. If you take the outpost again, you get even greater rewards. It's so much fun to sneak up to these bases, scope out where the guards are patrolling, make a plan of action, and then make it happen, either alone or with your AI buddies. Speaking of which, you can play this game online with a friend and complete the whole game as a team. I played New Dawn alone, but back in the day I played Far Cry 5 co-op and it was a lot of fun. Something else this game does for the first time are the expedition missions. You get to leave Hope County to go on short missions around the world, capturing a package and booking it to the extraction point. These were a lot of fun for me and are a nice break from the usual outpost capturing. 
They also fixed one of my biggest problems with Far Cry 5. This time your dog companion can finally ride in the passenger seat. I hope Far Cry 6 takes it to the next level and lets your dog drive. On that note, I really really wish you didn't have to shoot animals in this game. I know hunting wild animals was kind of a staple of some of the previous games, but it just felt wrong this time around. There's a few missions in this game where you're forced to do that, and I felt guilty even though they were trying to eat me for dinner. Maybe it's because you're not doing it with a bow and arrow anymore, but a homemade saw launcher of death. Maybe I'm getting old. I played this one on the Xbox One X and the Xbox Series X, and it looks great on both. The art style is fantastic, and I love seeing an action game that isn't afraid to use color. The water is a beautiful shade of blue, the ground is covered with vibrant pink flowers, even your weapons are colorful. When Far Cry New Dawn was first released on the consoles, it was locked at 30 frames per second across the board. But Microsoft has added the FPS boost feature to Far Cry 4, 5, and New Dawn. You can now play it at a buttery smooth 60 frames per second on the Xbox Series S and Series X. You do get a decrease in resolution, but in my opinion, it's absolutely worth the trade-off to get that much smoother frame rate. After revisiting this one at 60 FPS, it would be really hard to go back to playing it at 30. If you didn't like the previous entries in the Far Cry series, this isn't going to be the one to change your mind. But if you enjoyed them as much as I did and you're ready for more, pick this one up when it's on sale. I got this one digitally for 10 bucks and it was worth every penny.